everyone, this is Eric, KJ4YZI. Excited to have a new piece of gear here for my YouTube review channel. And this comes from www.gigaparts.com. This is an MFJ automatic antenna tuner. They call it the Antella Tuner. Model MFJ993B. If you haven't seen my video, the 939, you might want to check that out. This is the bigger brother to the 939. This has more buttons up here for more features. It's got the lighted SWR cross needle. So it shows you your forward and your reflected power as well as your SWR with a nice bright white light. I'll show you here when I put it in action. It also has a digital screen on here. And this digital screen will show you in a digital form your forward, your reflected, and your SWR as well as some other features such as your capacitance and L network values that this thing used to make the perfect tune. This has 20,000 memories in it, which the MFJ939 has 20,000 memories as well. Uh, this will remember your tune as you work through the bands. The more you use it, the more it learns from you. Eventually, you'll be hitting frequencies you frequent, and it'll automatically go to a one-to-one -one tune. You won't have to let it tune again. But it's almost instantaneous. This is really a great piece of gear. Um, so this is a dual power. 300 and 150 watts, meaning at 300 watts sideband CW, you can match a 6 to 1600 ohm impedance. On 150 watts, you can match 6 to 3200 ohms. That's a wide range. I mean, that's like a, it's like a higher than a 32 to 1 SWR that you can match with this thing. And it, it has the potential to match just about any antenna to your radio. Um, this is a very fast piece of gear, and I'll show you that um, when we hook it up to the radio. And I'll give you some more specs then. So we're going to turn this around on the back. You'll notice your two SWR, I'm sorry, two SO239 antenna jacks. This has a built-in antenna switch. Just pushing the antenna button, you can switch between one and two. You can also use a balanced line here. Now, keep in mind, it says on the back here, if you're going to use a balance line, you have to run a jumper from this post to this post, okay? And you don't ever want to have an antenna on antenna jack one as well as a balance line at the same time. That's a no-no for this tuner, okay? Uh, your transmitter SO239, your ground lug. I always want to ground this directly to a ground lug. Um, your power over here on the left. Now, this is not just for the light, say, on my MFJ969. This is actually for the electronics in here to calculate the match for your tune. So you have to have the power, and it comes with a 12-volt uh, power cord that will fit in here that will go right to your power supply. Uh, you can also purchase from MFJ a 12-volt uh, wall wart for this, but it comes with the wire that I just hook right to my power supply. So it only requires 12-volt 1 amp. Your remote port, this is for a remote uh, unit that they make for this to where if you wanted to put this tuner underneath your radio or out of sight, you can have just the remote controls for the buttons on front here on the desk. That way you don't have to have the whole tuner there. Uh, I don't have the remote port. I won't be showing you that, but it, it is a good feature for some people depending on what they want to do with their shack. And the radio interface. <clears throat> this, this antenna tuner is compatible with Alinko, Kenwood, Icom, Yaesu, various radios. I have a Yaesu FT450. Let me show you my interface cable here that I got with it. Now, this box here is the interface for my Yesu, okay? The connections here are as follows. So, what you'll do is you'll take the power cord that came with your tuner, you'll plug it into here, and you'll run that to your 12-volt power supply. The power cord, the red and black that comes off of here, okay, is going to fit in your tuner, like this. The stereo jack that's built onto this is going to go into radio interface like this. So you have your power over here, your radio interface, okay? The power cord that came with this is going to plug into this unit right here, and then your radio interface, which is a modular 8-pin for Yesu, like this, okay? And the other end of this will go into the tuning jack on the back of my FT450. Now, this may be different or set up a little bit differently depending on your radio. Uh, but 
this here will go into the tuning jack on the back of the radio. And that's for if you want to use the tune button on the radio to activate the automatic tuner. You can use this the way it is just by putting in your transmitter and an antenna. And as it detects the high SWR, it will automatically kick in and tune it and snap all the pieces together. So, uh, but the radio interface is if you have a, uh, a built-in automatic antenna tuner or the option to use an external like on my 450, you can wire it in there and as you hit the tune button, it'll automatically set this up for you. So let me go ahead and put this on the radio. We'll show you exactly what it does and how it works and uh, let's go do it. Okay, so I just put this on top of my FT450 so you can see exactly how big it is. It's a little bit longer. I would have preferred to have the radio on top, but for this video, I just set it on top here. Uh, you'll notice right off the bat now, you have your megahertz here, your frequency that you're operating on. It'll show you 1A. That is your antenna switch inside. So by pushing the antenna button, I can switch it to antenna 2, which would be the other coax port. If you're using a balanced wire, it's going to be on 1A. So you want to leave that on 1A. All right. uh, next is your SWR here in uh, digital form. Your reflected power and your forward power. Now here you also have an SWR and power meter for the digital graph. When you push mode, you'll have a graph here as you key up. It will show you here your SWR or your power and then you push mode again and it'll be SWR. We're just going to use it here in the uh, in the, the screen that I'm used to. So, for this demonstration, what I'm going to do is I have the radio interface connected, but I'll show you that, how that works, and then I'm going to show you just a direct through input to the transmitter port and output to the antenna. With the radio interface connected, you'll first want to set your radio. In this case, mine's an FT450. I'll go to tuner and I'll set that to external. All right. Now, as I hit the tune button to turn the tuner on, and I hold it, it automatically sent a low 10 watt carrier to the tuner, which automatically tuned it one to one. And that was pretty fast. And the other way you can use it is you can turn this off if you don't have that on, and just by transmitting on a CW uh, mode, I have 20 watts set as just a low carrier I could transmit and it'll automatically sense that it's a high SWR and it'll tune it. For instance, we'll go down here to 12 meters, okay? 20 watts on sideband CW mode. I'm gonna hit the button, you'll see the SWR here, what it is, and instantly you'll see it tuned to a one-to-one. -one. That fast, okay? Forward power 22, reflected zero, 1.0 SWR. Now it saved that in the memory so that if I go back to 10 meters, it should now automatically know exactly where it needs to put it, okay? And if it's not a 1.0 to 1, you can transmit and hold the tune button for about a second. It'll beep. Now it's a 1.0 to 1. 20 watts out, 0 watts reflected. And again, it's in the memory, so if we go back to 12 meters, done, okay? It automatically uh, found the match that it needed and applied it based on what it had used last time and if you hit the mode button again you'll have a power graph or power bar there okay and that is in the uh, the small scale all right so that's showing 20 watts now if I push mode again it will be in the uh, SWR mode okay so that's just one little bar there for a 1.0 to 1 all right if I push mode one more time it's going to show me the values that it found and used for this tuning. 75 picofarads of capacitance, I believe, and 0 0.08 microhenries of inductance in the L network. So <clears throat> if you choose to build your own tuner or you're curious on what the values are, there they are. Now with the C up and C down buttons, I can change the capacitance here to a different value. If I want to use 105 picofarads, but watch what it does to the SWR when I transmit it puts it higher. So the tuner is going to find the best match, but if you for some reason have to manipulate that, you can. Okay? 75 picofarad seems to be 1.0 to 1. And if you go too high, it'll automatically bring it back down to a safe value. So there is no accidental, accidental burn up. Okay? Now, same thing for the L. 
So you can choose a 0 0.08, uh, 0 0.08 micro Henry's. I can move that up, but you'll hear the audio, the audible SWR alarm on my radio, and it'll bring it back down. All right. So unless you need that, don't worry about it. All right. Now, <clears throat> when you're using this with the radio interface, you want to make sure the tune button, the auto button, excuse me, is out. Okay. And when it's in, it's automatic for the radio or for the without the radio interface. When you take it out is when you can use the tune, okay, button here. And that's just so you don't have to have it in CW mode, okay. You can leave it on upper sideband and just hold the tune button. And you see it sends a carrier here, tunes it, all right. But I prefer leaving that off. That's just me. We're going to go down here to 40 meters. CW mode for what I'm set on right now. And we'll transmit. 1.0 to 1, and then this is the values that it used. Okay, I'm going to set this back to forward and reflective. All right, now if I go down to say uh, 80 meters, um, my MFJ 969 roller inductor tuner you see right there, I could never get it to tune on 80 or 75, it just would not would not do it just too high of an SWR based on my antenna design so by transmitting very quickly it found a 1.0 to 120 forward zero reflected okay but a roller inductor tuner I could never get it just right and we'll go up here to say 30 meters we're about where I operate PSK digital modes okay and the SWR here is probably the highest on any band on my antenna. Okay, you'll see I just hit the button. It was 24.5 to one, 13 watts forward, 11 reflected. I'm almost losing every bit of uh, power going into that antenna. Okay, now as I hit the button, watch this. Done. Okay. Now keep in mind, this tuner or any tuner is not making your antenna resonant. It is still a high SWR where that antenna is radiating. However, if you want to use a wire for a multi-band operation, you're going to have to have a tuner. And using such a uh, tuner like I showed you here, the roller inductor, it'll take you a good, you know, three, four minutes per band to get the inductor and the, the capacitors where they need to be. Whereas this here is automatic. So a good starting point would be to have antennas that are resonant at a certain frequency and this will fine tune it. This makes your radio very happy because it sees a 1.1 at the back of the radio which is the most important. Now again, my antenna right now on 30 meters is probably 25 to 1 SWR. I'm losing almost all my power. But uh, there's no way to operate with that unless you use a tuner. So your radio is completely safe, your tuner is completely safe, and you can operate on it because sometimes you can't have nine different wires outside uh, attached to a tower. You can only have maybe one wire that's uh, you know cut for 40 meters. You can tune anywhere 40, 30, 20, 15, 17, 12, and 10. And with this tuner, you can uh, go ahead and use them on all those bands. Now, a lot of people thought that a tuner would make your antenna actually resonant, but it doesn't. So it's always a good idea to have it starting at a resonant point. In this case, my antenna does uh, is resonant on 40 meters, so um, it, it in a certain in a uh, without a tuner, I think 40 meters on my antenna the highest is like uh, 1.9 or 2.0 to one. Uh, so, anyways, we'll go back up here now just for demo purposes, and I'll go back up to 10, and we hit the button, instant, okay, instant, and uh, safe, okay, so. That is your MFJ IntelliTuner, and this is the 993B. So keep posted, subscribe to my channel. I hope this video uh, gave you a good demonstration of it. Comment below, and we'll see if we can get uh, some other pieces of MFJ for your review pleasure. This is Eric KJ4YZI. Hope to see you on the band, 7-3.